I just think it's so wonderful. We always think of these scientists in the past as being saints. And here he is sitting in his office thinking, he, he, I've made my competitor feel uncomfortable. And in a way, it's sad that we lose these bits of information because it makes science seem so much more exciting. We're in the library of the Royal Society looking at letters about radon. Radon is the heaviest of the noble gases. And in the early 1900s, there was still a big argument about the work and trying to isolate radon. Radon is given off as a gas in the radioactive decay of radium. Radium decays radioactively, emitting an alpha particle, that's a nucleus of helium, the mass four, and generates radon. Radon is itself radioactive and decays. So you have to have it, as it were, freshly made, rather like you can only get fresh meat. If you keep it for a long time, it decays away. The half-life of the most stable isotope of radon is just over three days. So it's really relatively short-lived. That means if you have a certain amount of gas, after three days, you'll only have half of it, another three days, a quarter of it, and by the time you come back from your holidays, most of it's gone. In the days that this letter was written, the way they were getting it was from the decay of radium. In fact, I read, and this is quite exciting, it's the first time you'll ever seen a glass in the library because they're strictly forbidden. The way they did it was to take a glass vessel and fill it with water. Imagine now you have a container of water with a piece of radium metal at the bottom. It is breaking down, generating radon gas, and bubbles of this gas will go up to the top. Very small amounts of gas because radium doesn't decay very fast. And so we can imagine that Rutherford and Ramsey are really competing to get the first sample to characterize it. And because it also contains alpha particles, it will be contaminated with helium. You've got to realize that these famous scientists were extraordinarily competitive. They wanted to get there first. And they considered the other one really a bit of a scoundrel. And so there was a sort of competition which is difficult for us now to imagine. And in fact, Rutherford was really rude about Ramsey's work. He says his work, that's Ramsey's work, is all right superficially on the surface, but when you get down in it, you begin to see the nothingness of it all. So he thinks it's rubbish. So this is in a private letter to his friend Schuster. Schuster was his surname, and he begins, my dear Schuster, because in those days you called your friends by their surnames, no first names, you know, it wasn't right. And this was written on July the 30th, 1908, so more than 100 years ago. The reason he's written this letter is because he's really excited. He has got a spectrum of this radon gas. It wasn't called radon then, it was called radium emanation. Emanation means coming out of radium. And he's got a spectrum, and Ramsey hasn't. You see, really quite exciting. And so he sent a photograph. And this is the photograph. So Rutherford has signed this, and he said, some of the lines run together in the reproduction, that's the print, and some, but they're quite clear in the negative. So he had an experiment in which he had a small amount of this gas, not more than 0.2 of a cubic centimetre, so it's not very much, in which presumably, though he doesn't say so, he put an electric discharge through it so that the gas glowed, rather like a neon sign glows red in a shopping centre. And he then photographed this light coming out with a photographic film using a spectroscope to spread out the different colours. All these gases give a whole series of lines, and this is a print of his photograph, because you get a negative in the photo, 
originally, and then he's printed it. If you come close, you can see it says the spectrum of radium emanation. There are actually three spectra here. At the top and the bottom are the spectra of helium gas as a calibration so that he can see what the wavelengths are. And he's written all the way down here the wavelengths of the helium lines. You can see Rutherford has fantastically good small handwriting, or it might have been his assistant Kay who wrote this, because his handwriting looks pretty difficult to read. And then in the middle is the spectrum of radon, radium emanation. It shows that radon is a completely separate element. And he's really excited because this is the first spectrum that he believes in. Ramsey claims to have got a spectrum, but Rutherford doesn't believe him. I don't know, because it doesn't say here whether Rutherford ever published this spectrum, apart from just sending it to his friend. But it sounds as if he's going to publish it, because he wrote, I think, Royds, that's his colleague, and I have certainly succeeded in making Ramsey temporarily very unhappy. We always think of these scientists in the past as being saints, and here he is sitting in his office thinking, he, he, I've made my competitor feel uncomfortable. Do you ever feel like that when you get one up on your scientific colleagues, collaborators, rivals? You say, you say it's a wonderful thing and a human thing. Let me put you on the spot. Do you ever take delight in beating people to things? I don't usually get quite so aggressive Perhaps it's not my nature. Though I did get quite excited when I made the compound that my German friend Friedrich couldn't, and I felt really quite good about that, but in a friendly sort of way. I was not hoping that he would be sitting there um, crying or whatever. But there are stories of Nobel Prize winners tearing up journals or jumping up and down on the journals when their rival has published something else. And I think it's important to realise that it's good to feel emotional about these things because then you may have better ideas. If you're sitting there cold and calculating and not very involved, perhaps you won't have the brilliant breakthrough that you might do otherwise. I don't know what happened. I suspect that Rutherford became more interested in the structure of the atom and having got this and so on, lost his enthusiasm or got more excited about something else because in the end, if you look in the books, it's Ramsey who's credited with discovering radon. Though, according to some sources, he didn't want to call it radon and he thought of a nice name. He wanted to call it niton for some rather obscure Latin derivation. But I think radon is a nice name. It sounds a bit like argon or xenon. And also, it connects it very nicely with radium. So, as names go, it's really quite a good and understandable name. As far as I know, nobody has really studied the chemistry of radon in much detail, but because it's below xenon in the periodic table, there will be quite an extensive chemistry. You will be able to make fluorine compounds, probably oxides, and a variety of other ones. And generally, as you go down the periodic table, the chemistry of the noble gases gets richer and richer. A couple of years ago, Brady and I went to um, an institute in Germany, in Darmstadt, and they had a display for the public of a cloud chamber. OK, we have a cloud chamber here, and I will now inject a radioactive radon gas into the chamber. And you will see that there's a lot of radioactive decay going on when I inject it. Wait a second for the gas inside. And Brady and I sat there for some time watching these trails, which look really very beautiful. 